This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. In today's presentation, we will review the various medications to treat Parkinson's disease. Unfortunately, we do not have a cure for Parkinson's disease, nor do we have a specific treatment which has definitively been shown to slow the progression of the underlying disease. As a result, the treatments that we have are predominantly used to treat the various symptoms for Parkinson's disease. We generally begin treatment when one begins to develop significant functional disability or impairment in activity of daily living, quality of life, or impairment with work or occupational function. Most of the medications that we use are designed to help replace the dopamine deficiency that occurs in Parkinson's disease. The gold standard or primary medication that is used is levodopa, which is usually given as levodopa with carbidopa. We will review not only how levodopa works, but also the other medications with w which work, again, predominantly on the dopamine system, although some of the medications that are used also work on non-dopaminergic systems. We will discuss the major classes of anti-Parkinson medication, which includes carpidopa levodopa, referred to often as Cinemet, catechol o methyltransferase inhibitors, or COMT inhibitors, monoamine oxidase type B inhibitors, or MAOB inhibitors, dopamine agonists, amantadine, and anticholinergics. Many of these medications are used in combinations, although some of these may be used by themselves or in monotherapy for the treatment of symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Levodopa is the main and most effective symptomatic treatment for Parkinson's disease. It acts to directly replace the brain dopamine deficiency that occurs as the result of loss of dopamine cells. Levodopa is a precursor to dopamine, and unlike dopamine, it can cross between the bloodstream and into the brain. Once levodopa is in the brain, it can be converted by dopamine-producing cells into dopamine. Levodopa is the most potent and effective symptomatic treatment for motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. It is the only anti-Parkinson medication which has been shown to actually reduce mortality, and it has also been shown to reduce disability. Almost all patients who have Parkinson's disease demonstrate significant improvement with levodopa if an adequate dose is used. Bradykinesia, or slowness, and rigidity or stiffness tend to respond better than tremor. Improvement can be seen within a few days, but gradually builds up, typically over several weeks. The dose of levodopa used must be highly customized, as the effective dose varies tremendously from patient to patient. The most common adverse effects of levodopa are nausea, often accompanied by vomiting, orthostatic hypotension, which is a reduction in blood pressure when changing position from lying to sitting or standing, resulting in dizziness, vivid dreams, and hallucinations. Hallucinations typically occur in patients who have advanced Parkinson's disease or have significant cognitive impairment and are uncommon early in the disease. There are two major types of motor complications associated with levodopa motor fluctuations, and dyskinesias. These may begin after months or, more commonly, years of treatment. Motor fluctuations refers to a variation in mobility associated with the effectiveness of levodopa. On times occur when the medication is working and mobility is good. Off times occur when the medication is not working well and mobility is poor. With chronic levodopa therapy and as the disease progresses, the beneficial effect of each individual dose may become shorter. Levodopa may have to be dosed more frequently, four, five, or even six times a day, compared to three times a day when initially started. Dyskinesias refer to excess involuntary squirming and rocking type movements, which may occur as an adverse effect of chronic levodopa. These usually occur during the on state. They can be mild and not troublesome, but can also be severe and interfere with day-to-day -day activities. 
The other form of dyskinesias is called dystonia, and this refers to sustained abnormal fixed posturing. Dystonia more commonly occurs in the off state and tends to commonly occur in the foot, causing pain and interfering with walking. This patient demonstrates dyskinesias in the form of rocking chorea of the left leg and abnormal foot posturing. This patient shows rocking and squirming movements of the head and face, as well as rocking body movements. His dyskinesia is activated by performing rapid alternating movements. Patients sometimes become confused and believe that dyskinesias are due to an increased rate of disease progression. It is important to note that motor fluctuations are not due to drug toxicity, and in fact, these are two largely unrelated issues. There is not any convincing clinical evidence that levodopa is toxic or speeds up the progression of Parkinson's disease. Some older reports suggested that very high doses of levodopa applied to dopamine cells in isolation may cause cell death. However, more recent studies examining dopamine cells in conjunction with their normal supporting cells in the brain have concluded that clinical doses of levodopa do not cause cell death. Some data has even shown that levodopa has a protective effect on dopamine neurons. Levodopa is the most effective treatment for motor features of Parkinson's disease and reduces mortality. Patients should not become weary of levodopa use based on misleading information in lay literature. As we discussed, levodopa is a precursor to dopamine that crosses the blood-brain barrier. Levodopa was initially administered by itself, but it was found that many patients experience nausea and vomiting. Levodopa is broken down by an enzyme called dopamine decarboxylase, or DDC, which converts it to dopamine outside of the brain. Dopamine outside of the brain is responsible for many of the side effects of levodopa, especially nausea and vomiting. Nowadays, levodopa is almost always given in combination with carbidopa, together marketed as Cinemet. Carbidopa inhibits the enzyme DDC and markedly reduces the peripheral production of dopamine, greatly reducing the incidence of nausea and vomiting. Another DDC inhibitor, benzerazide, is commonly used in Europe. Levodopa can also be metabolized by the enzyme catechol-O-methyltransferase, or COMT, outside of the brain. Dopamine may also be broken down by the same enzyme within the brain. COMT inhibitors, such as enticapone and tolcapone, extend the duration of levodopa, thus increasing the amount of on-time with an individual dose. These are only effective when taken in conjunction with levodopa and by themselves do not reduce Parkinsonism. Dopamine within the brain may also be broken down by another enzyme called monoamine oxidase type B, or MAOB. Blocking MAOB with rosagiline or selegiline can improve Parkinsonism symptoms directly by reducing the breakdown of dopamine within the brain. These medications may also be given in combination with levodopa to improve wearing off or motor fluctuations. Dopamine agonists are artificial molecules which mimic dopamine by binding to dopamine receptors. They may be used by themselves to treat symptoms of Parkinsonism or can be used in combination with levodopa to reduce motor fluctuations. Dopamine agonists are less potent than levodopa but have a lower tendency to produce dyskinesias when given in early Parkinson's disease. However, these medications have significantly more side effects than levodopa, including hallucinations, swelling of the feet, and sleepiness. The main medications in this class are Rapinarol, Permapexol, and Retigotine, also known as Requip, Mirapex, and Nupropatch, respectively. Anticholinergic medications are amongst the oldest sorts of medication used for treatment of Parkinson's disease and were the main treatment prior to the discovery of levodopa. These medications predominantly improve resting tremor and have a relatively minor effect on slowness or gait. The main medications in this class are trihexaphenidyl or artane and benztropin or cogentin. These medications are mainly used in younger individuals who predominantly have tremor. They may also cause other adverse effects including dry mouth, blurry vision, and constipation. Amantadine is also an older medication. It was first used to help prevent influenza type A 
and was subsequently found to have a mild effect on Parkinsonism symptoms. More recently, it has been found to be helpful primarily in reducing levodopa-induced dyskinesias and now is predominantly used in advanced Parkinson's disease for this purpose. Adverse effects are common and include swelling of the feet, dry mouth, constipation, vivid dreams, and hallucinations. I hope that you have learned a significant amount about the various medications used to treat Parkinson's disease. Medications need to be customized for each individual, and as the disease progresses, the medication regimen needs to be altered. Often, one medication may be used initially, but as the disease progresses, polypharmacy or multiple medications are often combined to deal with the variety of changing symptoms.